Hello and welcome to the second of the Livy Dev Diaries. Now, I wanted to open up the uh, video with the screen. This is the roadmap that was posted uh, a while ago, uh, basically showing off what the plan was. And of course, we're now on the Livy update. And the aim with this update is to focus on creating more distinct national identities and regional narratives appropriate to the era. Basically, this is what people have been asking for as flavor. Um, what we got in last week's Dev Diary was mechanics. Personally, I'm more invested in mechanics than flavor, though I can totally see the argument that more flavor is needed, and I agree with that too. Like, you need a balance of both. You can't just have one or the other. Um, I mean, the other would basically just be a book, I guess. Either way, yeah, a balance of both is best, and um, so this one is all about you know, flavor. And that's what we're getting in this Dev Diary. So let's jump into it. Hi, and welcome to another Dev Diary for Imperator Rome. As one of the major features in the 1.3 Livy update, we wanted to address objective and direction. We had discussed the possibility of a mission system well before release, but had not been happy with any of the designs that we'd considered. There were several key points that we felt, for legitimate reasons, hadn't really been covered by similar systems in our sister titles, so E4, CK2, and all that, and we felt strongly that Imperator Rome should have its own unique system. Firstly, we wanted to ensure that any iteration of a mission system avoided railroading the player into playing the game in the same way each time with any given nation, and secondly, that the player did not only complete tasks, but that the tasks and missions would drive story, both for the intended target and within the local region. What we came up with was a system in which we would write a mission, write mission blocks, if you will, which covered geographical areas or distinct subject matter, and of which the player had an array to choose from. For example, Rome may be presented with the initial choice to focus on uniting Italia, or instead choosing a mission to develop the land they already own, or to turn south and deal with Magna Gratia. So this is the initial mission options for Rome. We've got Rome and Italia. Um, Italia is our home as well as the centre of our country. We must grow the economy of our home region and renovate the capital itself to make it the shining centre of civilization it deserves to be. Completion criteria, uh, the mission will deal with developing the region of Italia. This will include embellishing our capital in Rome and increasing the food supply. And then other options are the matter of Magna Gratia and the Pearl of Italia. Well, actually, this one is the Pearl of Italia. Roman Italia is, is another one. I assume this one's going to be all about culture, I, I think. And then uh, matter of Magna Gratia is, of course, expanding south and attacking the tribes there. So before I go on... Um, I want to bring up a few points, right? Firstly, um, this, I feel here, is incredibly important. Uh, I do like the mission trees in EU4 for one playthrough only. So, England is fun to play and play through and get all of their missions, but once you've done that, it's not so fun the second time. Aragon has an amazing mission tree that I've discovered in the um, the multiplayer game I've got going on right now. It's a fantastic mission tree. But once I've played through it and got the missions, I don't feel inclined to go back and play Aragon again. Ottoman similar, Mughal similar, all that kind of stuff. Whereas the previous system they had, the missions in the decision you know, menu, um, they were dynamic, and they weren't so railroady. Um, so I do see the mission trees as an improvement in design, but again, it it only lasts for one playthrough where I feel that they are an improvement. And then, you know, if you wanted to play two playthroughs of a country, then the previous system I feel would have been better. So. With that in mind, what do I feel about what we've so far learned about these missions? Well, firstly, at the moment, it doesn't tell you what you need to do. It gives you a vague idea before you start the mission. Whether we're able to take multiple of these missions, um, like say you complete Roman Italia, are you then able to take Matter of Magna Gratia? I don't know. Um, Though there are a lot of replies by Arheo in the comments, and maybe that will come up. We'll have a look at that later. 
Um, I assume probably we're going to be able to take all of the missions. Um, and I kind of feel like if they were a bit more locked, that might be better. Um, but yeah, that that's really what I wanted to bring up. That I really hope that they manage this. Avoid railroading the player. Make it so that I play Rome and then I decide, you know what, in two months' time, I'm going to play Rome again because I feel like it, I can have a different experience to last time. That's what I want to feel. Um, but yeah, let's let's move on with the dev diary because I'm just rambling right now. Each of these new mission blocks will be self-contained and are all intended to tell a bit of story alongside the expected mission fare. Missions will appear as dynamically generated flow trees and contain a variety of tasks including time tasks akin to focus trees and objectives requiring conditions to be fulfilled. With the relative power of the scripting tools available to us, we've been able to create a series of highly procedural missions with varying objectives and task branches which will react to the situation in which a nation finds itself, which should maintain a basic feeling of individuality each time they're selected. This idea of generic missions, if you will, is an inevitability while the mission system is its infancy, but should provide enough variety as to prevent every nation from feeling directly comparable. So, um, this is an Egyptian tree, I think? I mean, it's all about Egypt, but it also could be to do with Rome going into Egypt. But basically, that's one of these. Say, you've taken a mission called Pearl of Lower Egypt, and you get your completion criteria that gives you some vague example, you click start mission, and then you're greeted with this. The art I really like. Um, Maybe the layout is not so good, uh, being able to see only two rows of missions in, in a single window is maybe not the best use of space, but I will say he's been able, I say he, but the team, I don't know if it was Arheo himself that did all of this or if it was you know team effort or whatever, missions will appear as dynamically generated flow trees that react to basically the what is happening around them so if you click matter of magna gratia the first time you play it you click matter of magna gratia and you get a flow tree that has you know say five different things take out this person take out this person complete this in a certain time blah 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 it might not be the same as the next time you play as rome and take that mission because the situation in the region is different say you finished off magna gratian you're going into sicily rome would i assume have a mission to defeat syracuse the the tyrant of syracuse must be defeated because he's a tyrant and he's a bastard and all this kind of crap uh, but what if carthage has actually defeated them before that happens with this as I'm reading it, I'm thinking what we're going to get is a different mission branch based on, you know, Carthage is now owning Sicily. Maybe the the mission will be we must get Carthage out of Sicily or something along those lines. So if I'm if I'm right, if I'm reading this correctly, then I'm quite optimistic. I remain optimistic about most things, but I, I feel like this could be really nice. Um, and also just look at these. Heropolis breeding program, no idea. Expand trade in Western Delta, um, that's pretty obvious. Shipyards of Sice. Um, Sice is a city, I believe. Um, construct a flagship, now we're going to get into that later, so... I do know that Arheo has commented on this particularly. Embellish Alexandria, which does have a progress bar. So does Construct Flagship, for that matter. And then Saccharus Separum at Memphis. I don't know what a Saccharus Serapeum is, but yeah, it's interesting. And then it goes on to another one, and I assume it's coming from more as well, because we're halfway down the scroll. Um, and then you can abort the mission, or you could finish the mission, and maybe you'll get some bonus for finishing it as well. I don't know. Of course, we're working on a great set of story missions, and one of the primary focuses of these is to provide a sense of regional narrative, which is, again, something that a lot of people have been asking for or 
probably more accurately, complaining about the lack of. <laughs> um, a mission for Rome which deals with Sicily, for example, will contain a great deal of regional involvement, one or, sorry, for the primary antagonists as well for the nations close by, but incidental to the greater conflict. Our story missions are just that, stories intended to allow a player to pick chapters appropriate to their interests, which to, in which to immerse themselves. Cover a bit more about our story missions in the near future, so stay tuned. Do my best to cover any questions that you have about the upcoming systems. And he has. There's quite a few comments that I'm going to go through soon. So, yeah. Um, yeah, primary antagonists as well as nations close by. This makes me think, it does, does the AI also get these missions? And are they going to be reacting to the results of your missions? Because if every nation is getting these mission trees and trying to go for them and then depending on which nation manages to finish their branch faster that will change somebody else's trees that could be like a really intricate interwoven doodly do and yeah technical term um and that could be really interesting i'm yeah i'm optimistic i, I hope this is going to be a real success i think it's definitely got potential definitely got potential um, so yeah, let's go into the comments because there are a few questions that have been asked and our hair was answered. So the new button teased last week is the missions button. Yes, that is the uh, Hercules looking button. Um, I said it was a, a man with like a fur cloak on him. Hercules with his lion's, you know, pelt over his head. Um, so yes, that was the missions button. Um, will be interesting to see how it plays out. I personally think mission trees are great for new players and first runs, but I do agree with the ra issue of ra railroading. So happy to see a compromise here with the trees being more dynamic, but I guess we'll have to see how it plays out. Also, flagship. Um, so, yes, this is where I was talking about him talking about the flagship. It's an optional mission task that can appear in one of the generic missions under the right circumstances, i.e. most importantly in the right places. It lets you create a few heavy ships, i.e. the ones that do the heavy ship abilities, not necessarily requiring you to have the tradition to do uh, to build those yourself. So if you are a barbarian and you manage to capture a port that gives this kind of thing, then you might be able to get heavy ships that way via the, the flagship. And then those flagships would be mighty precious to you because you're probably not getting more of them. You really want to protect them. Uh, so yeah, that's quite interesting. I like it. Um... The examples which you've provided with Roman Egypt, do they translate into what it will look like for completely random nations too? I'm very curious to know what it looks like for a nation without any flavorful history. Uh, the Egyptian one shown is a generic dynamic mission. Okay, so if we scroll back up to here, this is all dynamic and not not railroaded like, you know, Matter Magna Gratia, Pearl Vitalia, that kind of thing. And if, yeah, I mean, if that's the case, then absolutely, that seems quite... The, the, obviously, I don't know what this means don't really know what the requirements are for this uh, expand trade seems fairly obvious the breeding program is probably to do with population embellish in alexandria maybe building a temple or building something i guess um and again if you have any idea what sacra serapeum is or a hero opolis please do let me know um so yeah that's that um Oh, and that's all of them. That's a shame. I thought there was more. Welp. Let me just refresh just in case there has been more since I last looked. Uh, no, that's it. That's it. Well, that's your lot then. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very interested to hear what you guys think. Um, like I said, I, I'm in two minds about the EU4 mission tree. I haven't really played with the focus tree in Hearts of Iron all that much because it's not a game that really interests me all that much, but from it, it looks like a mix between the focus trees of Hearts of Iron and both the old and new kinds of mission trees in EU4. And if that's the case, then I can see this being quite nice. I'm obviously going to have to play with it a bit more. And I will be able to this weekend because I'm going to ParadoxCon and the Livy update will be playable at ParadoxCon or so we've been told we'll be able to play with the uh, the food mechanic, the supply mechanics that are in 
the previous dev diary and I assume also this that is the plan at least and um, I guess I can give you my thoughts after I come back from ParadoxCon. Also, um, I have been awarded, allowed, offered, I don't know. Um, I'm going to be interviewing Johan and Arheo. I've got 15 minutes with both of them separately. Um, so 15 minutes with Johan, 15 minutes with Arheo. And this is the first time I've ever done an interview. So, what I would like you guys to do is leave comments down below suggesting me questions to ask them. Of course, I won't be able to ask them like a ton of things. And what I'm looking for is kind of questions that they can give detailed answers to, not just a yes or no answer. So, as, as well as your comments about the dev diary, which I'm very interested in, I also want to have your suggestions for what you would like to learn from Johan and Arheo. And there will be a video about those answers after ParadoxCon. So, yay! Sounds, sounds fucking awesome. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. If you're going to ParadoxCon, feel free to say hi if you see me. And, um, yeah, thank you all very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.